Hey guys, I'm coming to you from my washroom tonight because my wife and son are in there sleeping like normal people. It's about 2 o'clock midnight and I'm just getting home from work. And uh, I've been listening to this guy on the way home from work named Billy Cunningham and I tried to uh, get in on the radio uh, but I couldn't get through. And so uh, he's just going to have to take a beating here on YouTube. Uh, I would have let him defend himself on his own radio show if he would have let me through, but he didn't do that, so he gets what he deserves. But uh, he's talking about all this protectionism, talking about Mexican truckers, how they're going to, uh, you know, be uh, on, on American streets and have less safety and all this different stuff. And he talks about how they're taking jobs from American truck truckers. And it's all, of course, a net loss to the American economy. And his quote was that he saw absolutely no benefit in it at all. He's talking about the jobs that have been outsourced to China and trade deficits with China. And how this is destructive to our uh, economy and to the dollar and things like this. Well, it just amazes me, you know, with the hundreds of years of economic theory that we have, uh, that these types of ideas still persist, you know. Uh, I'm going to have to look it up again and see when it was that Bast Bastiat wrote. I think it was in the 1600s. But he totally discredited this notion of protectionism and he totally blasted it uh, as any type of logical thinking. Uh, you know, only in this trade deficit uh, could you send away 200 million dollars worth of things, let's say, and receive 500 million dollars worth of things, and somehow calculate that as a 300 million dollar deficit. Now, the last time I checked, if I give you 200 million dollars, and you give me 500 million dollars, that's 300 million dollar profit for me. But these protectionists uh, don't see it that way. They're so worried about us sending something outside the country that when we um, I don't know, they, they don't want us to deal with outside uh, countries, but yet when we uh, don't send out enough and we receive in too much, uh, they call that a deficit. Uh, it's totally bogus. Furthermore, exports always must equal imports. There's no way around it. You don't even, you don't have deficits, and to tell the truth, you don't have profits. Um, if you leave gold certificates the same, okay, um, if you don't do a lot of shifting around of these gold certificates, what we export can only be uh, brought back to us in the form of uh, that country buying products and services or in tourism. Uh, there's no way if we sell them something uh, and give, or we buy something from them and give them dollars for it their dollars will always remain worthless unless they redeem them somehow. And the only way they can redeem their dollars is for products and services or tourism here in the United States where we will give them uh, those dollars back. So if we're worried about importing too much stuff and you know eliminating jobs, which is all the protectionists always worry about, it's a total fallacy. It can never happen. We're buying things in dollars, and the only way they're ever going to use those dollars that they have in their hand is to buy something back from us. So exports always equal imports. The other thing is you eliminate all these um, imports. Say an American company can make a sweater for $50, and a foreign company can make a sweater for $35. Now, how is it a negative? for us to go buy that sweater for $35. And let's assume it's of the same quality and the same, same style and whatnot. If they can make that same sweater 
for $15 cheaper. And we can buy a sweater and a pair of socks. Haven't we got more for the same amount of money? When you get more for the same amount of money, or you can buy that one thing for cheaper, isn't that known as a better standard of living? Of course, uh, the protectionists will argue that this uh, eliminates American sweater making jobs. But, you know, since when was somebody entitled to a sweater making job? You know, uh, I'm not a very good farmer. Uh, but at the right price, I can make some corn. Uh, I think corn goes for about 4 or $5 a bushel. I'm not sure. But, but it's just made up. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's just uh, say that for the purposes of argument. Uh, whatever the price is, I could make it for $20 a bushel and, and probably come out, out profitable. But, you know, I'm not a very good farmer. There are farmers that can make it for 4 and $5 a bushel. So do I turn around and say they've thrown me out of a uh, uh, out of a corn manufacturing job, out of a corn farming job? No, the person that can do the job gets the job. Uh, the person that can do the job better gets the job, and we're all the better for it because we have people producing goods and services that are the most qualified to do so, and they produce them at the most efficient ways and give us the lowest prices for them, so we can buy more with the same money. Or we can buy the same amount of things, and it will cost us less money. So it doesn't matter if that person lives across the border or if that person lives next door to you. If somebody can do something better, more efficient, cheaper, then we all get a better standard of living as a result because we can buy more for the same amount of money or buy the same stuff for less amount of money. Also. Nobody wants to talk about uh, eliminating the welfare state. All this protectionism, keeping immigrants out, and all this stuff. Nobody wants to talk about eliminating the welfare state. I have to check the time. The time is getting close to being up. But illegal immigrants, if you eliminate the welfare state, eliminate Social Security, eliminate Medicaid, Medicare, outright welfare, public schools, uh, all of these elements of the welfare state, it's like this that you won't attract people that are these thuggish types. You'll only attract people that want to work and make an honest living for themselves. You see, if you don't have anything to offer and they can only come here for what they can offer us and they can't come here because of what we hand out, then you're going to change the type of person that you attract into the country. Illegal immigration doesn't is not near as big of a problem without the welfare state. Never mind uh, the burden that, that they'll will or won't put on the social services once they get there. I think it will greatly change the type of person that will come here. You can afford to have a lot of immigrants. And God bless immigrants. Uh, this country was built on immigrants. But immigrants are not a problem when you don't have the welfare state and you don't have uh, the ability for them to come in here and simply mooch off the country. Also, exporting jobs allows for more, usually better, higher paying jobs here. Everybody talks about exporting jobs in the manufacturing sector. That usually winds up in more uh, jobs being created in service and professional sectors like engineering and consulting. Uh, a recent study I read about uh, showed that big time uh, outsourcers of jobs were actually net creators of jobs. They lost a certain amount of jobs or exported, outsourced a certain amount of jobs. And those same companies that did a lot of the outsourcing actually were net creators of jobs because they were able to create more jobs with the money they saved. So protectionism is bunk. It's bogus. It's discredited and it is hogwash.